Holy cow, it's cold in Florida right now. It's in the, woke up this morning, it's in the 30s. And the climate is jackets. And as you can see, I am freezing right now. This brings up the subject I wanna talk about today. And that is the environment or the part of the investment cycle that we're in today and why that is happening but also what we can do to screen out companies, to find companies that are gonna perform really, really well in this climate. So as you're very aware of, the world is different compared to a year ago. A year ago, markets were just sailing higher. There was a little issues or uh, questions about coronavirus and this, that, and the other. And yet markets and economies were doing great. And then of course the last year has happened and you're very familiar with where we are at in the world, the uh, shutdown of our world early on in March, April, May, and then the crashing of the market and then the recovery of the market and all time highs being set uh, in the markets and stimulus checks and then no stimulus checks and then uh, infighting amongst the politicians and divide within our country. Uh, and now here we are, February of 2021. And what is happening? Well, economically, things are good. Markets are doing great, along with the economic environment. We're seeing growth. Year over year growth, economy wise, is happening. Now, understand. A year ago or so, or so, and if you really, I look out sort of the, the first quarter of this year, we were in, in at a bottom, a very big negative when it came to our economic growth. But today, in comparison, things are doing really, really good. And that warrants an environment of risk on. And in a risk on environment like we are seeing, where we're seeing economic growth, we're seeing increased inflation, the cost of goods are going up, and monetary policy is hawkish, uh, meaning bullish in the sense of they do not want to raise rates, they do not want to increase the cost of money, they do not want to stifle this recovery out of a recession. So they're going to continue to fuel that growth. And so what do you do and how do you select the investments you need to own? There's a flood of money. They're talking about more stimulus checks. There's back and forth about a $1,400 stimulus check and then monthly income stimulus checks. And once they figure that out, that means, if, and once it's implemented, that means there's more money in the system, which means more money can be deployed to buy goods and services and re generate the growth again in the service sector. So like retail and, and uh, well, food and uh, those kind of things. We're also seeing where the bond market is declining. So the yields are going up and values are going down. And where most people typically would put money for a conservative portion of their portfolio, like in that traditional 60-40 allocation, that 40% allocated towards bonds, unless it's more high yield bonds or floating rate type bonds, is actually going down in value because yields go up, bond values go down. Now, that is the, you know, the short and nitty gritty of it today. Now that can change over time, depending on what our economic conditions are. But today, risk on. We're seeing more risk being taken. We're seeing the dollar decline. We're seeing the, uh, the assets that de uh, are oppositely correlated to the dollar go up. So like commodities, um, uh, stocks, uh, risk assets, those kind of things are going up. Even the crypto world is going up in value. So what should we be looking for when it comes to what particular ingredients to a stock that is going to perform well in this environment? What are those ingredients? Well, here we go. I'm going to give you three of them. Over the last week, we've seen in these three indicators, the rate of change uh, go up drastically in the form of returns. So 
I'm looking at companies that are in the top 25% of market capitalization. So these are large cap companies uh, overall. They, um, we have seen a rate of change from last week's uh, performance to this week's performance, and it's significant. And when you see a significant rate of change change, typically that is an indication that there's money flowing into that area or flowing out of that area. So that rate of change spread increasing is really significant. So I'm looking for the top 25% uh, percent, percent, top 25 percent market capitalized companies. So large cap companies in most cases. Now, since we're going through earnings season, we are seeing sales and we're seeing earnings becoming better and better. We've just recently seen a handful of companies who reported earnings and they were awesome. They were great. So that rate of sales uh, change has gone up also. So over a month ago or a quarter ago, we're seeing that rate that sales growth escalate. That rate of change has widening. So I'm looking for uh, top 25% market capitalized companies. I'm looking for companies that have sales growth in the top 25%. Okay, so a big rate of change there. And so those two uh, combinations all of a sudden takes the world of stocks and narrows it very quickly. So these are two areas that I'm looking at right now of four companies. Now, if you track the VIX, the volatility index, like I do, you have seen it go on a wild ride this past week. We've seen it go from roughly 20 or so on the VIX jumped up to 37 because of the whole uh, thing with uh, Reddit and the GameStop situation and uh, Robinhood and the closing of uh, stock trading in certain securities with Robinhood. And we saw the VIX spike really high. Sort of more of an episodic event, um, an event that is a one time off. And since then, the, the VIX has declined. And when the VIX jumped like that, the spread in between the low side of the VIX and the high side of the VIX widened very drastically. And when you see a widening in that area, it oftentimes is a uh, indication that markets are about to juice back up and make a move higher in most cases or juice back or, or, or actually go down. In this case, we saw a really a short-term event in the VIX, that jump in that widening, and it created an opportunity to capitalize on. And we saw a couple other indicators with that represent a bullish environment when volatility spikes like that. And where we can capitalize in a big way on companies that, that are more sensitive to volatility are high beta stocks. Well, what does beta mean? Beta is a measurement of risk compared to a benchmark. So the benchmark, like in this example, is the S&P 500, and it has a beta of one. Now, anything compared to it can have a beta higher or lower. If it has a higher beta, so let's say it's a 1.1% uh, beta, or 1.1 beta, or 1.10 beta, yeah, 1.10 beta, then it's going to have more of a 10% reaction, more over and above the S&P 500. So if the S&P 500 goes up 10%, a high beta stock that has a 1.10% uh, beta will go up 11%. More importantly, and this is where risk management really comes into play, is when the S&P 500 goes down 10%, that beta high beta stock that 1.10 percent stock will go down 11 percent and that is very important especially if you see a break in your uh, long term or intermediate trend so more than three weeks overall when it comes to the trend three weeks to three months and so if that trend breaks and you have high beta stocks you're going to take more of the brunt of the losses in comparison to a benchmark like say the s p because you're going to escalate that speed of rate of change on the downside but in markets like what we're seeing now where we're seeing a, a steady intermediate trend up and we're seeing when markets you know pull back to that intermediate trend level and the vix spikes like it did last week 
it creates a great opportunity to look for high beta stocks. Stocks that are going to react more than they say the S&P 500, if that's your benchmark. And so we're now looking for top high beta stocks. So we got three indicators, three uh, criteria we're searching for. Right now, because the rate of change from a week ago to now, we're seeing growth in the uh, high capitalized companies, uh, so top 25% high capitalized companies. Second, we're looking for companies that are seeing, uh, are, that are in the top 25% in sales growth. So there's there are people more buying more of their stuff and their sales are going up and they're in the top 25%, okay? And then third, we're looking for high beta stocks. Because of that market going higher, we want juiced up high beta stocks that are gonna move more so, more than the actual, their assigned benchmark, and we're gonna see a move higher, and we're gonna capitalize on that. So those are the three indicators that I'm searching for good companies, solid sales growth, larger cap companies, because that's where the money is flowing. The 401k money is flowing into more large cap companies. Uh, we're seeing more sales growth in their area, that area because we're recovering from a deep recession. And now we wanna capitalize on that growth in sales and good earnings by buying into more high beta stocks. So those are my three search items. Now, at some point, that'll all change. This is educational. This is for you to write down and start building your process of how to best invest in, your, in what cycle we're in and best manage your risk overall. And when we switch cycles and we go from a high growth, high infl growing inflation, a hawkish environment to more, let's say, a stagflation environment where slowing growth and rising inflation and concern from our government, then it's time to change how we allocate. We take risk off the table by possibly going to lower beta stocks and more conservative positions. So, as I said, this is not advice, this is educational only, but these are three indicators that I'm using right now because of the rate of change in those indicators compared to a week ago, compared to a month ago, is significant enough to tell me things are going to go higher in those areas. So let's go find the best companies to buy and capitalize on this incredible opportunity.